Okay, so we have here a problem that gives me four streams and I renamed the stream names. It was one, two, three, four. I changed it to H1, H2, C1, and C2 because it's just simpler. We have a temperature supply here. We have a temperature target. This is a T, small t. And we have the CP value and we have a load. Delta H, uh, you could call it Q, whatever you like, really. And we are also told in the problem that the delta T minimum is going to be 10 Celsius. The question asks, uh, they want the pinch and te pinch temperature, basically. And they also want the minimum, uh, the Q minimum for cooling and for heating. The way we go about this kind of a problem is that we first need to calculate the loads. So we look at the information that we are given. At H1, uh, we apply the rule, which is what? We know that H is going to equal CP. This thing is delta T, right? So CP from here, it is 2 uh, times 180 minus 40. Generally, what do you want to do is you want to make sure that the um, when you subtract these two temperatures, you end up with a positive value. Okay, so this is a guide. And then you're going to multiply 2 times 180 minus 40. That's going to give you 280 kilowatts, which we put here. Same idea with H2. Let me do the cold streams. Basically, we are done with the hot stream loads. So, 2 for the cold, we are going to say that C1 is going to equal, again, the CP. What is the CP here? It is 3. So, I'm going to say it's 3, and I'm going to say it's 180 minus 60 because I want it to be a positive value. And this thing would give me a value of 360 kilowatts. So, I put 360 here. And this is done. After that, I'm going to check C2. The CP value is 2.6. So 2.6, 105 minus 30. And this thing is going to give you 195 kilowatts. So 195. And then after that, we can carry on to the next step. So, in this type of problem, how are we going to find these uh, values? First, we calculated the load from here, and we got them. Second, after calculating the load, you are going to say we need the intervals. And then third, you are going to use these intervals to find the uh, summation of Q hot, um, and the summation of Q-cold. Fourth, you are going to draw a cascade. And then fifth, you are going to draw a revised cascade. Of course, for now, you just put these in your mind, but we are going to go through each one of them. From the revised cascade, you are going to get I'm sorry, but from the revised cascade, you are going to get your pinch and you are also going to get your Q minimum cooling and Q minimum heating. So you have to know the process of it. It's just a process. Now we are at doing the intervals. So let's do that. Now, to draw the intervals, you need to draw this, sketch this first. Um, between each two, let me just, so between each two lines, you have one interval. So this is one, two, three, four intervals. Okay? And you need to include every single temperature present in here. How? 
First, we look at the largest temperature at hand. You have 180 and you have 180 here. Because basically this thing goes from highest temperature to lowest temperature. So, T capital indicates the uh, temperature on the hot scale. T small indicates the temperature on the cold scale. So, this is how you order it. Now, everything in the hot streams is going, like all the temperatures of the hot stream are going to be here. And all the temperatures in the cold stream are going to be here. So let's start. 180, right? I'm going to start with the cold stream. So 180 would be in here. Which means because of the delta T minimum law, or rule basically, I'm going to have to have a 190 here difference. So this is done. Next, I'm going to look at the second biggest value, and it's again 180, but on the hot side. Notice that I'm putting it here on the hot scale under the capital T because this one is uh, hot on, at the hot stream, which means this thing is going to be 70. What is the next big biggest value? It's going to be 150, and again on the hot stream, so this is 150. You get 140 here. And then after that, you have 105 on the cold stream, which means you have 115 here. And then you're going to have 60 on the cold stream, which means you have 70 here. And it looks like we're going to need one more interval. So on the cold stream, it's going to be, no, on the hot stream, it's going to be 40. So 40 and 30, and hey, they're all there now. So we basically have five intervals. After this, we are going to represent each stream with an arrow. And as you can guess, because the scale here is cold, you can imagine that cold streams are going to be here and hot streams are going to be here, right? So we start with the hot streams. You look at the tea supply. The T supply for this stream uh, is going to be 180, which means you're going, let's put like a dash here. And the T target is 140. So if it goes from 180 to 140. So you draw it like this. And H1 is going to be 2. 2 meaning the CP. I'm not going to put the units right now because it's going to take too much space after this so h1 is done we do all of the rest in the same manner so we did the other two now let's do the last one so these are done c2 is going to be from 30 to 105 so 30 is here and 105 is here so it goes up and c2 is going to be 2.6 now what now we go to the third step, which is we calculate the summation of Q hot and the summation of Q cold. Okay, now I just like cleaned it up a little bit. So we did the intervals, this was the second step. Now we are at adding up the Qs for the hot side and for the cold side. You do need to remember that this is considered hot and this is considered cold as we said earlier now right under it i'm going to calculate the um value for the summation now how do we do that we basically are going to say um we have the first interval here the first interval is here right on the hot side, we have no arrows, so basically you have zero. And then on the cold side, you have one arrow here. So we calculate its load. This thing is going to be the CP, which is 3, times the interval 180 minus 170. You need to remember that this thing is the interval, meaning it's between 180 and 170 in this case. And you need to remember that when you're calculating the load for the um, cold side, you consider the temperature on the cold scale, 
Again, this is the cold scale. And the other one is the hot scale. And you're gonna get 30 kilowatts. Let's do it for the second one. The second one is going, so basically this is done. Second one is going to give you a value of, it's the same idea, but it's going to give you a value of 90 kilowatts. What about the other side? The other side is going to be mm, 2 uh, times 180 minus 150. And this thing is going to give you 60 kilowatts. So this is done. Now, we'll look at the interesting part. We see that we have two arrows here. What we can do is we can add them up. So we're going to say that it's going to be 4 times the interval 150 minus 115 plus the second one 2 times the same interval so these are done which is going to give you a value of 210 kilowatts similarly for all the rest and again when you are doing this for the cold side and you have two streams uh, in one interval, it's the same thing. You just add them up, add their loads up, and you're gonna get a value of 252. That is by saying it's going to be 3 times 105 minus 60 plus 2.6 times 105 minus 60. And then we can carry on to the next step, which is drawing the cascade. So this is the cascade. It's a series of squares, basically. And each square presents an interval. Since we have five intervals, it's going to be from one to five. And basically, what we're going to do is um, we are going to have the Q values here, which are going to be what? The Q values for the, the summation of the Q on the hot side, basically. Which is going to be 0, 60, 210, 270, and 180. I'm not going to write units, but they're all in kilowatts for now. And then we have here 30, 90, 105, 252, and then 78. What you want to do here is that we want to find the residuals. The residuals are basically these. These are R. And the point is that we need to find uh, a residual point where you have it at zero, aside from this thing. Um, at that point, you have a um, pinch between two intervals. And then you get the pinch, and we can find the Q minimum heating and cooling from there. Now, the way that we are going to calculate the residual is similar to what we do when we do when we say mass in equals mass out. Of course, these are in kilowatts, but this is what I personally do, and it works. So, for the first interval, it's going to be zero plus zero, which is in equals out, and it's going to be thirty plus x. X being the residual here. So this goes to the other side, so x is going to be minus 3. I'm, I'm sorry, minus 30. So this is minus 30. And then after that, we do it for the second interval, which is going to be what? It's going to be 60. Well, plus minus 30 is minus 30. And this is going to be the out, which is 90 plus x. 90 goes to the other side. Well, 60 minus 30, that is going to be 30. So your x is going to be um, 30 minus 90, which is minus 60. So here we have minus 60. And we do it for the rest. Now, after we did all of that, we look at the biggest negative value which is minus 60. This thing becomes, in the revised cascade, it becomes your Q minimum 
heating and it gains a positive sign. You take this value and you put it at the top when you do a revised cascade and then we repeat the calculations again and we should get a zero value that is the pinch. So now we repeat the calculations again. For the first interval we are going to say you have 0 plus 60 which is 30 plus x. This goes to the other side so x becomes 60 minus 30 which is 30. Your residual here becomes 30. For the second interval we are going to say we have 60 plus 30 which is going to be 90 plus x. And 90 goes to the other side so your x is going to be 30 minus 90 which is going to be minus 60. No, sorry. We get it's plus, so this thing is going to be 90. So you get a zero. So this is a zero here. And again, this, let's pick another color. This thing is our pinch. Since we got it, at least it confirms that our steps are correct. And it means that your pinch temperature is between the intervals 3 and 2. So we continue with the calculations to find the Q minimum for cooling. Remember that it said it's between intervals 2 and 3, which means it's this line. And this line basically is for these two temperatures. So this means that your pinch temperatures for the hot side is going to be 150 celsius for the cold side is going to be 140 celsius and we found the minimum cooling we also found the minimum heating values from here and by this we have solved the question now after this we can perform we can make the grid basically but this is for part two where we do the matching but to give an idea we basically have to create a grid where we are going to have the hot streams here and we have the cold streams here and the pinch is going to be right here. This is the pinch for the hot stream and this is the pinch for the cold stream. And using the tea supply that we had before, we know that the tea supply for the for H1 is going to be 180 and the tea target is going to be 40. We also know that for H2 is going to be 150 and the target is 40. We know that the T supply for C1 is going to be 60. And be careful, it starts from the other side. And it ends at 180. And we know that the T supply for the last one is going to be 30. And the target is going to be 105. And by this, you finished solving this problem.